<coughs> Turn your Bible with me to the, uh, to the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy. And as you turn, I'd just like to introduce to you Brother Alex with us this evening. And as you are for the first time for our Bible study, welcome brother. And I hope you will enjoy the fellowship and God's word and may it be a blessing to you. Actually, we, every day we get uh, at least three phone calls. Uh, because um, we had this previous number what we have on landline was uh, belonging to somebody and then they cancelled it and we got the number. And so we get this at least three times in a day we get this call because that was a different company. And so before we used to say it's wrong number, it's wrong number and finish the matter. And then we thought no, the best thing is next time when somebody calls we will say this is the Baptist church or this is about the Bible class. And so yesterday, Brother Alex, for the first time, he called thinking that it's of that company. And then I picked up the call and said, sorry, this is a Bible class, a Baptist church. And that's how we came to know, and then today he's with us. And so we believe it's God's divine appointment, how God does this for His glory. Amen? Amen. 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 It was wonderful that we sang this hymn, The Love of God, How Great a Far. Some, we, you, you and I can't, uh, can't really, we cannot fathom the very love of God, how deep, how higher, how wide uh, it is. Mm? And um, actually we started doing a small video, uh, devotional uh, uh, video preaching and uh, from today onwards actually we've been uploading to the YouTube. It's about three minutes or two minutes of short exhortation from the scripture. And so yesterday night we just thought about it and we have... Uh, my wife and I planned about going to some scenery and put the camera there and I'll preach and she will do the shooting. <laughs> and so it was, and we had to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. We put the alarm at 6 and it rang at 6 o'clock and I thought, no, I don't want to wake up. It was cold in the morning, but it wasn't possible because I think my wife was more excited to go <laughs> uh, than me. And so she woke up and she was ready and I had to get up and get ready because she was already ready. And so we went early morning up to uh, Shikeri uh, Mountain where the lighthouse is. To that mountain we went early morning about 6.30 we went. And it was bright then and we put the camera and I began to, I, I was talking about um, delighting in God. It's just a, a three minutes clip it is, it's on the YouTube and we'll be doing it every day for people's encouragement to help them grow closer to God. And while I was talking there, what we could see was the peaceful river of the Arabian Sea, the ocean. It was peaceful. Sometimes it's so rough and sometimes it is so peaceful. And we were just think, looking, about, looking at this ocean and talking about God's creation. And then suddenly we saw a peacock crossing us. And that peacock, we, uh, you know, during the um, rainy season, when you look at the peacocks, they have this feather bloomed and blossomed and huge. But I think the, in this season, they shed their tails, uh, the feathers they shed. And so this peacock uh, did not have the uh, feathers much as it, uh, as it is during the month of June. But what we really enjoyed, we stopped our bike and as it was crossing, we just stopped and we were just enjoying the beauty of God's creation and looked at that, the color of that peacock. I, know, I don't know how close you have seen the peacock, but I have seen, my wife has seen today. And of course, I think you have seen very closely. But the very color that God has made this peacock with, it's royal color. And we began to think and talk about God's unique creation and His choice of colors to make it look beautiful. Amen. And the love of God. He, he made everything because He loves us. Mm? Well, let's turn our Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we will see the benefits of studying the Bible. The benefits of studying the Bible. If you want to see peacocks, you can come with us. We'll be Every morning we'll be somewhere in some mountain. Okay, If you want, you can just give me a call. I'll let you know what tomorrow where we are going. We have not decided yet. Tonight we may decide where to go. Okay, we may be in Vagator tomorrow. Yeah, we do not know. But that will be at 7 o'clock. We'll be there. We'll leave home by 6 o'clock. We are committed to make a short clip of 3 minutes video and preach God's word and encourage people every morning. And they wake up, they look at our, they w watch and hear the message and start their day. Well, 
Second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come into thy most holy presence this evening, and we ask you to bless us and give us a receptive heart and alert mind as we study thy word. And as we see today, the benefits of studying the Bible, O oh God, may we apply uh, this truth to our life and uh, may we put it into action and that we may also influence other people, O oh God. So today, teach us and show us thy word, O oh God, and uh, may it be a blessing to each one of us. We give, thy, we, we give all the glory and honor to thy holy name. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? <coughs> now what we are going to see today is the benefits of studying the word of God. The benefits of studying the Bible, which is the word of God. So we will be turning to certain scriptures um, and see what is the benefit. But first and foremost, God expects that we have a desire or it is even commanded to you and to me to study. Many a times as Christians, we do not spend time in studying God's word. We think it's just for leaders. We think it is the Bible is only for the preachers and pastors and evangelists and missionaries and it may not be for lay people. But as a Christian, God says, you and I, every child of God should study God's word and hide it in our hearts. Amen. As David says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. So if we want to overcome temptations, it is the word of God that gives us the power to overcome temptations, trials and troubles that would keep us away from problems, that will keep us away from snares. It is the word of God. And so God expects you and I should study God's word. Why should you study God's word? The first thing that we see in this verse is study to show thyself approved unto God. Amen. It doesn't matter what man says about you and me. It doesn't matter who says what, what matters ultimately is whether God approves you or not. Amen? Study to show thyself approved unto God. So next time when we sit and study God's word, may your desire and may your thought be, well, I am not going to study so that people may speak highly about me, but I am going to study God's word so God may approve me. Amen? So when I study God's word, that God would teach me and God will say, well done, faithful servant. Amen? Nowhere in the Bible God ever says, well done, pastor. Well done, evangelist. Well done, missionary. Well done, apostle. No, he is looking for a servant who is willing to obey him and study his word. Amen? Amen. That's why God, there will be a praise in heaven when you stand before God. When God says, well done, thou faithful servant. Amen? Amen. And so study so that God may approve us. Okay? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Just imagine. If you and I would not study God's word and, and, and somebody wants to know something from the Bible and would come up to you and ask you a question, a simple question of the Bible. And if you are not able to answer that, what would be our testimony for Christ? It will be a shameful testimony, right? It, uh, te a greatest testimony, as I say all the time, the greatest testimony... For Christ and a greatest testimony against Christ is a life of a Christian. How is yours and my life? Are we studying so God can approve us? Are we studying that I don't want to be ashamed in front of men? So when they ask me a question, God says, you should be able to give an answer. Amen? You should be able to give an answer. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. What is rightly dividing? Why is Paul using rightly dividing? You know, you understand one thing? Paul's, what was Paul's business? 
He was a tent maker. And so to make a tent, he had to rightly divide, cut things into proper me measurement and make things properly so you can get a good tent. And so he used that phrase as rightly dividing the word of truth. So we must understand, when you read the book of Timothy, is it written to you or for you? This epistle of Timothy was written to Timothy. But it is for us. You see that? It is not written to us, but it is written for us. Okay? But specifically, it is written to Timothy. When you see in the Old Testament, they were told to circumcise. Right? You cannot put that in the New Testament today and say New Testament Christians should circumcise. No. We see today that we are not, <coughs> sorry, we are not saved by law, but we are saved by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. And that's what we rightly divide. And God himself divided into Old and the New Testament. He divided into a um, into uh, the, into the testaments, okay? And then we see how, when we study the Bible, we should be able to rightly divide, okay? The word of truth. Well, that is a command to study God's word. Why? So God can approve you and me, so that you and I should not be ashamed. But that we may rightly divide the word of truth. Now, what is the benefit of studying the Word of God? What is the benefit of studying the Word of God? Turn with me to the uh, same book, uh, verse, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. The benefits of studying the Word of God. In verse number 16, 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, many a times we read, you know, we make a decision and say, I want to read my Bible. Then you start with Genesis and once you come to Leviticus and Numbers, what happened? Oh man, you're speaking about thousand camels, thousand goats, thousand rams. I'm bored. I don't want to read. I'll skip it, right? But then what we find out, we find out what the Bible says. All scripture is given by Inspiration of God. Even that 10,000 camel is inspired by God. Whatever is written in the Bible, everything is inspired by God. You know what? Many a times when you think that, oh, I don't get anything from there. And so I'm going to skip. No, never skip. Try to read. And see, there are certain jewels where God will reveal it to you. If God has written everything over there, it is for a specific reason. He wants to teach us something. And God will reveal when we are willing to study and know. Okay? Okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Okay? Why? What is the benefit of studying God's word? It is profitable for doctrine. Remember... If somebody comes and teach you something else, imagine you, somebody comes and say, Hey, Jesus is not God. You know, we believe in one God, but Jesus is not God. He's just a servant. Now, if you do not know the Bible, then what happens? It is easy for someone who does not know the Bible to say, Well, that makes sense, man. I don't think Jesus is God. But then if you study your Bible, and if you know the Bible, if you know your doctrine well, then what happens? You are able to defend the truth. You are able to say, Hey, this is what Bible says. In John chapter 14, the Bible says that Jesus said, I, am, uh, I and my Father are one. So what is He saying? We are God. Okay? I am God. I am Jehovah. Like when you uh, study in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse num number 6, what is Jesus saying? Uh, what is the Bible says? For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Okay? And then His, his name is what? Everlasting Father, Jesus is Jehovah. Okay? If you study the Bible, you find out Jesus is God and He is claiming deity. He is claiming that He is God. But if you do not know the Bible, when a Jehovah's Witness comes to your house, very easily, you can be deceived. Okay? So it is important. The benefit of studying God's Word, it, it's profitable for us, for our doctrine. For reproof, it corrects us. It, may, it, it, it helps us to check 
in the Bible and prove yourself. And then it's for correction. You correct others and you correct yourself by the truth. And for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Studying, the benefits of studying God's word will thoroughly furnish you. You know the furnish, uh, furnitures you have in, at home? And you, you bring this polish and furnishing and you furnish, you, you paint, you, uh, what do you say? You furnish it, right? To ma- polish it and that looks well furnished, right? And so when you do that, it looks brand good. And that is what God is saying. The word of God will furnish you thoroughly. So that, you know, it says what? Thoroughly furnish unto all good works. So the benefits of studying God's word is that one who studies God's word will be thoroughly furnished by God and his word for all good things. Well, turn your uh, Bible uh, to the book of Psalms chapter 1. The benefits of studying uh, the Bible. Psalms chapter 1. I'm sure this chapter is very uh, familiar to you all. There's nothing wrong in seeing it again. Okay? Psalm chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Speaking about the word of God. Delighting in God's word is very important, my beloveds. Okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Meditating God's word is also studying God's word. You, whatever you read, you ponder over it, you think over it, you, you keep thinking about what God showed you from what you read and studied. Meditating, thinking and pondering over it. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. What happens to a person who studies God's word? How does he benefit? See what happens to his life. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall Prosper. You know what the Bible says? If we, if we are sincerely delighting in God's word and meditating upon God's word, God, this is the promise in verse number 3, that you will be fresh, fruitful, and always His blessings will be new every morning. Amen? You'll be fresh, you'll be fruitful. You will be like this tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yesterday I was visiting. Uh, we, my, my wife and I went and we were sharing the gospel to two families. And they were from the Roman Catholic background. And one family was very receptive, listening and asking questions. And we were able to answer. And it was wonderful. And they took me to another family to the nearby and this lady was a Roman Catholic and she said to me, to, as I was sharing about how to be born again, she began to share with me about the visions that she was seeing. And she told me, Brother Jesus appears to me regularly and he tells me that I need to say, open my Bible and I need to pray Abba Father or Our Father in Heaven. Then I began to tell her the, uh, about uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11 how Satan transforms himself as an angel of light. And and then I asked her, Well, Jesus told you to say, Our Father, did that Jesus ever tell you that you must be born again? Then she said, No. Remember, one thing, Satan never wants you to be born again. Jesus wants you to be born again. Amen? Amen? Jesus told Nicodemus, Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you know the truth, you will be able to discern what the truth is and able to share the word of God to somebody who asks you the, asks you the question that you will never be ashamed of. 
Okay? And so when you delight in God's word, when you meditate in God's word, you will be like a tree that is planted. It's not just you'll be bearing fruit. It means you'll be fruitful, you'll be fresh. At the same time, you will have wisdom and knowledge of God. So you can be able to share the truth to others and able to help others in knowing the truth. Amen? So the benefits is that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither. And here, and whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. This is not some um, fairy tale. This is the truth. This is the promise from God. That if you will delight in God's word, and if you will meditate God's word, you will prosper in whatsoever you do. It may be your business. It may be your uh, education. It may be your family. Put God. Put God first and may your life be built upon the word of God. Amen? Amen. And God promises these blessings in your life. That's not wrong. That is absolutely right. Come to Joshua chapter 1. Book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. In the book of Joshua chapter 1, God is uh, uh, speaking through Moses to uh, Joshua. In verse number 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then... Thou shalt have good success. There's difference between success and good success. Amen. When you, you see it is possible to be successful in this world without God. There are a lot of people who are successful in their business. There are a lot of people who are successful in the education. It is possible to be successful without God. Yesterday I was talking to a pastor on the phone and he said, Brother, you do not know how weak I was in my education. If I had passed in my 10th standard, it was only because I cheated and I passed. <laughs> okay? He did not have success in his education. But then he said, Brother, I was such a duffer. But today if God is using me so mightily, it's all because I spend my time in God's word. This is good success. Amen? Amen. There is a success from worldly way and there is a success in God's way. When you have success through God's way, you know, people will be surprised and say, how is it possible? The truth is, when you delight in God's word, when you love God and when you obey what God's word says, God promises that you will have prosper, uh, your, your ways will be, it says, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Amen. So let us submit our lives to God and say, Lord, I don't want to be successful from the worldly, worldly point of view, but I want to be successful from your point of view so that I can have good success by meditating in God's word. You know what happens when you meditate God's word? The fear of God comes in you. And then you want to be a man of dignity, integrity, and sincerity and honesty. And many a times what happens, people watch your life. And when your life is watched and you show yourself to be honest and sincere person, true prosperity comes there. That's called people start promoting you. And God brings blessing because you are becoming a, a lighthouse in that dark world where you are placed. Why? Because you fear God and you want to be a testimony over there. You don't want to do anything in a wrong way, but you want to do everything in the right way. Amen? That's how good success come into our life. Okay? The benefits of studying God's word. You'll be fresh, fruitful. You'll be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. You will not be ashamed, but God is going to approve you. See in John, I guess it is. In 1 John, in 
You know, as the Bible says, believe not every spirit. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. <clears throat> you know what God is saying to His children? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. How will you able to try the spirit? How will you able to try the spirit? Only by studying God's word. When you study God's word, you will able to recognize what is true and what is false. Okay? If you do not know the word of God, you can be easily deceived. The benefits of studying God's word is you will not be deceived. Amen? Amen? So you are able to discern what is wrong and what is right, what is true and what is false, which is of God, which is of the devil. Okay? These things will keep you safe. These things will keep you close with God. These things will help you to be able to teach others the truth which l many people are longing to know and to have. Okay? So as you and I come, as we love God's word, may our desire be, Lord, I want to know more and more from thy word. I want to know you deeply and more closely. And I don't want to be ashamed. Oh Lord, I want your approval. Just your approval as I study God's word. May I grow not to be deceived, but to discern what is true and what is false. And accordingly, O oh God, my utmost desire is to bring glory and honor to thy name. Amen? Amen. And as this is our desire, and if this is our desire, we are, what we are doing is automatically we are delighting in God and we are um, as we and we are desiring his word every day and when we de delight in him what god's word said in psalm 37 verse 4 he shall give thee the desires of thine heart okay so may our desire is to delight upon god remember dear friends the secret of enjoying christian life is to delight in god remember that one thing always keep this you want to enjoy your Christian life. You want to enjoy life without guilty feeling. You want to enjoy life. Delight upon God. When your desire is to delight. When you are delighting in God. You know what happens? You will stay away from so many things that will put you in trouble. Because when you are delighting in God. God is delighting in you. There is a close fellowship. In John chapter 15 verse number 7 says, if, thy, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Amen? So there is promises when we are in God and God's word in us. He promises to bless. Let us not doubt in his word. Let us not doubt in his blessings. Let us believe in God's word and let us meditate and study God's word. And as we see the benefits of God's word, as, studying of, as we see the benefits of studying God's word, let us, let us benefit from it by studying God's word. Amen? Because this is the sword. This is the only weapon. This is not a defending weapon. This is the attacking weapon the Lord has given you and me. Amen? To fight against the enemy. So may we use our weapon sharply every day. Shall we pray?